Romans 4, 17. Now we're getting to the heart of it. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. He was talking to Abraham at the time. Before him whom he believed, even God. Now look at the description of God. Who quickens, makes alive the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. <clears throat> That's what I want to emphasize here. In Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God. Obviously, God speaking here. And there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Now, notice the description God gives of himself. Declaring the end from the beginning. Now, when you declare the end from the beginning, what do you do? You call those things which be not as though they were. Do you get that? Now notice, you're not calling things that are as though they're not. See, that's what Christian science does. I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not sick. No, nope, that doesn't do it. I'm healed by his stripes. I'm healed. What are you doing? You're calling those things which be not as though they were. Right? Now, <clears throat> he says... <clears throat> declaring the end from the beginning, now watch, and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. So what are you doing? Whenever God is calling those things which be not as though they were, what's he doing? He's calling those things, now watch this, that are not yet done. So he, it's, it's not, he's not lying. They're just not yet done. Do you get it? So whenever you start calling things which be not as though they were, you're not lying they're just not yet done. But they're as good as done if God said it. And when you call things which be not as though they were, you are proving you believe that God is true to his word and you're willing to stand on it and say, this is it. Why? Because it's just not yet done. God will do it. It'll be done. Now, when it comes to sickness and disease, see, we don't even have that luxury. I mean, we can call things which be not as though they were, but we have to realize your healing is already done. It was done 2,000 years ago when Jesus went to the whipping post. So that's already done. So you can't even say it's not yet done. You know? Uh, now, it, it, you may not see it yet. And if you want to describe it, then maybe you could say that. Well, I, I haven't seen it yet, but this is it. I'm healed. Well, you don't look healed. Well, that's because you're not looking with the same eyes I'm looking with. See, you're looking with your physical eyes, and I'm looking with my faith eyes. Because we're to walk by faith, not by sight. Amen? Does this make sense to you? Yes, sir. I hope to clear up some stuff, because there's people that have hang-ups in, in this area. Now watch. <clears throat> he says, declaring the end from the beginning. This is Isaiah 46.10. Declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times, from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. So he's been saying from ancient times the things that are not yet done, right? Saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Guess what? Just because you don't see it, all that means is it's just not done yet. In other words, you'll see the fulfillment of it. Why? Because he's going to do all his pleasure. And it was his pleasure to put Jesus to grief so that by his stripes you were healed. Now, let me ask you this. Did Jesus ever speak of things that were not as though they were? Well, let me give you a couple examples, okay? <clears throat> First off, what is it called when you, speak, when you speak things that haven't happened as though they already have? What do you call that? Prophecy. Exactly. It's not lying. It's prophecy. Do you get that? Now, let me give you a couple examples. Number one, Lazarus. This sickness is not unto death. What was he saying? But now notice, Lazarus was already dead. Do you get that? But he said it wouldn't end in death. And yet Lazarus was already dead. So what was he doing? He was calling things which be not as though they were. Do you, do you see that? The next one, the fig tree. Jesus said, no man eat fruit of you here henceforth forever. He was already saying something that was not yet fulfilled, but he was calling it as though it already were. 
other words, you're dead. This is it. No more. You get it? The, the girl that Jesus raised from the dead, in Matthew chapter 9, verse 18, it says, While he spoke these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead. But come and lay your hand upon her, and she shall live. So what was that man doing? That man was calling things as though they are. Isn't that right? And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise, he said unto them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. What's he doing? He's calling things which be not as though they were. Do you see that? He's, we could even say he was being prophetic at that moment. It was a very short prophecy because she's fixing to be alive. Isn't that right? And they laughed him to scorn. Then he raised her from the dead. Well, who got the last laugh in that one? Amen. I always thought it was so funny because it said they did all that and then Jesus put them out of the house. It wasn't even his house. And he still put them out. I love that part. It's like these people left their own house or at least their relative's house, right? Or somebody there. And they left the house and Jesus put them all out and then he went to work, right? People say, well, see, he had to put out the unbelief. Really? Do you think people's unbelief is stronger than Jesus' faith? Come on. He didn't put them out because he couldn't do anything. It had nothing to do with that girl. The man had already said, if you come lay hands on her, she'll live. So it had nothing to do with the unbelief of the people. It had to do with Jesus didn't want to put up with them. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I've been there. I've done that. I put people out of a house. I was in Colorado one time. And I put people out of their own house. Their own house. Not their neighbors, not their friends. Their own house. I told them to go outside and wait. And I had, uh, I, yeah, I had a couple of guys with me. And I told him, I said, take them outside and start talking to them. Do some, start, say, okay, here's how you do that. You start talking to them in the living room because the sick person's usually in the bedroom. So you, you gather up in the living room. You say, but listen, all right, he's going to tell you some things. And then you get that person to start talking to him. And while he's talking, he walks toward the door. <laughs> and the people follow him. And when they get outside, he comes back in and shuts the door. That's what you do. So, <laughs> that's what we did there. So. <laughs> we know a few things because we've seen a few things, okay? <laughs> so what can I say? Now, look at John 11. Now, a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and, sis and her sister Martha. Verse 2, and it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now you have to put this, that Jesus is hearing this at least two days later. Okay? <clears throat> now, he says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. These things said he... And after that, he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest in sleep. Notice Jesus knew he was dead and still wouldn't say he was dead. Well, he sleeps. What? He's dead. He sleeps. Why? Because he wasn't going to agree with death. He agreed that he was going to go and wake him up. See, see, if you don't have faith, you will never understand somebody that does. Faith speaks in a way that normal people don't talk. And it speaks from a position that normal people will get mad at it because it's in denial. It refuses to be reasonable. Why? Because faith isn't reasonable. Power isn't reasonable. Miracles are not reasonable. Amen? Do you get this? 
And if you're going to walk in faith, you ain't going to be reasonable. And you ain't going to be able to sit and talk with people and reason with them and all that stuff. That ain't going to happen either. You won't do it. You will dismiss them and you will go somewhere else and you'll walk off or they'll walk off. One of the two will happen. Why? Because you're not going to put up with it. You will, you will never agree with that person. Because the minute you agree with them, that thing becomes written in stone. And whatever they are, they'll get worse. People of faith do not have the luxury to speak of things as they see them. They can only speak according to what the word of God says about situations like that. So he says, <clears throat> they said, oh, where are we at here? There we go, yeah. Uh, then his disciples, well, I guess I'm going down. Uh, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought he had spoken of taking of rest and sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. You made me say it. I didn't want to, but you're so dense that I had to say it. But he still knew that he could raise him. Did you get that? Then when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Now, this is a story we had just read a minute ago. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if you had been here. Notice they both said the same thing. If you'd been here. My brother would not have died, but I know that even now, whatever you will ask of God, God will give it you. Jesus saith unto her, your brother shall rise again. Now notice, notice the difference. Jesus said, your brother will rise again. When did she see him rising? At the resurrection, at the future time. Isn't that right? Jesus was thinking today. You notice the difference there? Jesus thinks today. Why? Because today is the day of salvation. Today. He thinks today. People think, yeah, someday. And that's how most people think of sickness and disease. Well, Jesus will heal you. Yeah, I know he will. Sooner or later. No, he's not saying that. He said, no, no, no. It's already done. 2,000 years ago, it was done. Today is the day. We were talking about something like this the other day, and I quoted that old saying as a I believe it's a Chinese saying or something. I don't remember now where it came from. But they said, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today. Don't worry about what you didn't do 20 years ago. Get busy today. Start planting today. Listen, some of you need to start planting a harvest or, or planting seed with your words because your other words are starting to bring a harvest and you don't want that harvest so you need to start planting another seed. You need to plant way more seed of the good harvest that you want rather than the seed you planted for the bad harvest so that the good seed will overtake and outgrow the bad seed. Does that make sense? Some of you need to catch up on some things, right? Not just do it the same level. You need to catch up and go beyond it. You need to drown that old seed with new seed. So he said, Martha said unto him, I know that he'll rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. When he had thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice. Lazarus, come forth. Notice, no prayer. Command. And he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, loose him and let him go. Do you realize? Okay, I don't know if you know how they were buried, but they were wrapped like a mummy. Their legs weren't loose. They were tight and they were wrapped up and he still had the napkin on his face where they lay because it was almost like a, almost like a cocoon. And the only thing you could see was a person's face. And then they would put the napkin over the top of the face as the last thing before they, when they put them in the grave. But this thing was almost like a plaster of Paris. By the time they did all the stuff to it, it would have been almost like a cast. And here Lazarus is dead. And they usually had him on a, like a bench off the ground. And so Jesus calls him forward, calls him out. And he stands up. 
and gets to the door, bound hand and foot. How do you move if you're bound hand and foot? The power of God moved him from where he was lying, stood him up and moved him across the room, across the tomb, to the door, and he didn't even know where he was going because he still had the thing on his face. Now think about that. So you got to put yourself there and go through all this stuff to really see what happened. It wasn't that he just, oh, woke up and got up and, you know, moved over and wiped his face off and left it on there, you know, and just, it wasn't like that. So I'm finishing right now. <clears throat> but now notice, okay? You, what, what do you say? Well, you say this, by his stripes, I'm healed. Just say it with me, by his stripes, by his stripes I'm healed. I'm healed. What, well, now, what did you just do? You just called those things which be not as though they were. You didn't say, by his stripes, I'm going to be healed. Why? Because that's not scripture. 1 Peter 2.24 doesn't say, by his stripes, you shall be healed. It doesn't say that. He did not promise you that you shall be healed. He gave his word that by his stripes, you were healed. He called those things which be not as though they were. You don't say, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not sick. Right? <clears throat> that's calling things that are as though they're not. That's not Bible. What we say is by his stripes, I'm healed. That's calling things that are not as though they were. Now, just in case you think, well, that's lying. Okay, that shows what you believe. That, now, if you say that, but you don't believe it, in other words, if you say by his stripes, I'm healed, but you don't believe it, then you're lying. But if you believe it, you're not lying. Do you get that? 